Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by. This is Sandy from Color Creatively. And today I thought I would work in a book that I've had for a while, Charming Villas by the Sea. And this is by Linda Wright. These are grayscale um, copies of masterpiece paintings. So we're going to do something totally different. Let me show you what I've been doing with this. Um, in the past I worked on this and... Um, we used soft chalk pastels and eyeshadow. And here is your, your uh, example. It's printed from the uh, famous masterpiece painting. And then on this side of the page, you get two practice uh, places where you could practice your colors. And this is the one I did. Now, it's not going to... Let me get a... a zoom out a little more. Uh, there, this will not match this depending on uh, your mediums. Now we use soft chalk pastel and makeup eyeshadow. So um, these are printed and you're not going to be able to match it exactly but this is just a guide to finish your own masterpiece. So let me show you the ones that I've done here. Just a few. Uh, this was the printed one, and this is the one that I did. And this was a lot of fun. A long time ago, in the beginning of my channel, I did. I worked in this book. So there's the masterpiece, and there is the one that um, I completed. And uh, there's only just a few here, so let's go through it. This was the masterpiece above, and this is the one that I completed. Now, I thought today I would use a different medium. This I can feel I used some kind of watercolor. No, I didn't. I'm sorry. My book got wet. Okay, this came out a little bit more muted than that, but those were the colors that I had in my arsenal at the time. Anyway, it's been a lot of fun because the grayscale does a lot of the shading for you. Although I did believe I did uh, use a little bit of pencil. But this time we're going to try to do it a little differently. And I thought I would work on this. I've been working in order on this book. And it's been quite a few years since I worked in it. And I hope you'll enjoy this. Uh, if you're interested in my supplies and book, I'll list those below. So, like I said, you can see here in the picture and in this picture the, the heavy brush strokes that the oil painting actually had, the texture that the oil, original oil painting had. And so does our copy look like that. Okay, I want to try this time to use gelatos and distress crayon. If you have any kind of gel crayon, you can do this. And I'm going to clip this back here so that I can not have it fall down when I'm working. Fall uh, close. And I'm going to try working on this little house and picture here. I have a cardboard behind it, or I should say um, cardstock. So I thought I would give this a try. And um, they're just some beautiful, I, I've done flip throughs of this in the past. But they're beautiful photographs in here, or not, I should say copies of paintings. And this one I did, too. I forgot about that one. That one I did. So they're easy, they're fun, and you can use different mediums. Now, I haven't tried, to be honest with you, I haven't tried watercolor. I was just using eyeshadow and soft chalk pastels. So this time I am going to be trying gelatos and um, Distress Crayon or King Art Gel Sticks, whatever ones you have, okay? Uh, if you want to get the colors exactly like I have, I'll list my products below. I am an Amazon affiliate and I don't mention that very much because I don't want people to think I'm selling you something. 
but I do buy everything from Amazon because I'm handicapped and I don't get out to shopping centers. The other thing is, um, if you purchase anything through any one of my links, it doesn't have to be art related, go through one of my new links, then um, I will get a small commission. It's no cost to you. So I just want to mention that every so often. And thank you to the people that have been using my link. I really appreciate that. I'm going to push my computer back a little so I have more space here. Okay. I'll try to get this one on camera, the one I'm working on. Okay. So um, the reason I'm using gelatos and distress crayon is because I don't have too many colors of each one. And... Uh, they have different colors and different um, brands here. So uh, let's see what I want. I tried to lay them out a little. I've got Tattered Rose and Old Paper. So I think I'm going to take Tattered Rose. And, well, I'm going to do the sky before I do the building. Okay, sorry about that. I'm going to use these three colors for the sky. I'm going to use Broken China, Speckled Egg, and this one is Snow Cone for the sky here. And I believe this one is the darkest, and then it goes to that, a gelato, and then that one. So you can mix gelatos with King Art uh, gel sticks. You can mix Distress Crayons. You can mix them all together. You don't need to get a huge set of each one, as long as each one of these brands have a different set of colors. Okay, and here's my little holder with my brushes. Uh, I'll list these brushes below too for those that would like to get brushes to uh, work with this uh, gel crayon. I'm going to use a method of wet and dry and on the sky I want to go dry. So I think I'm going to take this size brush and I thought that I would take maybe this size. No, don't know yet. I want a smaller brush for going around the edges. So I'll just take these two, give them a try, and we can always change brushes. Okay, I will be using a acrylic palette, and this wipes clean with a baby wipe. Uh, I will be putting the, um, this is for new people, putting the crayons here, the gel crayons, and then picking them up with my brushes and putting them on the paper. This is the dry method. And then we'll switch, if I need to, to the wet method. Okay, let me put my palette here where I can see it, reach it. You won't see it, it'll be off camera but you'll see what I do with it. Okay, let's come in. I'm not going to, when I zoom in, I don't think you're going to be able to see the picture up here, but that's okay. We'll show it to you as we go. Okay. Hmm. Hold on a second. Let me adjust my camera. Seemed to be a little bit too far away. Okay. We've got the sky here. Now I'm going to turn my book so that I can um, work on it. Um, I'm going to use a darker. Now I'm going to do it a little bit darker than what this will be, I think. I don't know how it's going to come out. I haven't tried it in the book yet. But I thought I would go first with the Distress Crayon. Broken China is the color. And I want to pick it up. And I need to put more because my brush is brand new. It has to get broken in a little bit. Okay. And for those that are new, I'm just picking it up dry like that. That's all. Then I'm taking another piece of paper and I'm doing it off a little bit so I don't get a big blob there and a dark spot. And the key here is light, very light pressure. No pressure at all, actually. Just very, very light. And as you can see, we've got a beautiful grayscale in these. Now, I can't do the edges. I'll do that with the smaller brush. I don't want to... You can erase these, but don't deliberately go over something that you don't want colored. Try not to. 
because it's a lot easier when you don't have to erase. This is a large brush, so it takes a little bit more color in it to... And, oh, I'm going down. I don't want to go down. I want to make that dark across the top because I want my sky darker there. So this is my first time trying this. I'm experimenting with them on grayscale. I did do a Tim Jeff's anim some animals from Tim Jeff's books, but this is a different grayscale. Okay, and I do a little by little my crayon on my palette. First of all, I don't want to waste it. Secondly, it dries up, and I don't like it when it's too dry for me to pick up. Okay, I'm making this darker here across the top. See how far, far that goes. They, uh, they have a color that I don't care for next. So what I'm doing, now you can do your own colors. This is your coloring book. I'm going to use a different color. And uh, these books by Linda Wright, I'll list them below. They're just gorgeous and lovely and a lot of fun to do and not hard. And if you're a beginner, they're excellent. Okay, now that was Broken China Distress Crayon. I am taking Snow Cone. It's in the Bright set from uh, Gelato's. I can't think of the name all of a sudden. Now, to clean my brush, I'm just, I don't want to get it wet. Oh, where's my paper towels? Hold on. Let me get my paper towels. And um, I'm going to just wipe it off here because they're blue. Now, if it was totally a different color, I would use my little spray bottle. And I would spray it uh, lightly. This is a travel bottle. You get in a travel section uh, when you want to find products to take in your suitcase. And uh, then lightly spray it and wipe it here till it's clean and let it dry. You must use these dry if you want a dry method, otherwise um, it's going to set it. So don't use it wet, use it dry. We will use the wet method, we'll be using water brushes. Now let me see if I'm going to get a lighter color, because I have some of that ink still in, or not ink, but Distress Crayon still in my brush. So I want to put some more of the gelato in my brush. Okay. And I don't know if that's going to be a uh, transition that's noticeable. I am just going to do it lightly here. Well, that looks they look pretty similar when I put them on the on the um, palette here, don't they? Well, that I can do the I can darken the top a little bit more. Okay, let's do this. And we'll go along the edges with our smaller brush. Now, I'm going to wipe just wipe this off like that for now <clears throat> because I want to go back with the darker color. A little bit of the darker one across here. This is your guide, and these are the colors that you can use, or you can put your own colors on them, on, on these pictures. Okay, now that looks a little bit better the way I wanted it. Uh, let me use a smaller brush to get this right up next to the edge. I just don't want to have to erase. <clears throat> and these little brushes are great for going around your image too. I'm going to be doing that also. Now here on the branches, the leaves, there are going to be some colors as you can see here from flowers, so I don't want to go over it too much because I don't want to mix colors. 
I want my flowers to be the colors I choose. And uh, I'm just going to go around the building here a little bit with that. Uh, broke, um, is it Broken China, the darkest one first? Okay, and then I'm going to blend it. Uh, blend it all in. Oh, I want to do the edge over there. This is uh, takes a little bit of time. It actually it goes a lot faster than if you were to do it with other methods, and especially with pencils. Okay, so I may have to erase that there. And I have a lot on there. I want to blend it. Okay. And you can use a, a different size brush to get different effects. Okay. Mine's going to look a little bit different than that picture, but that's quite all right. We are cooking along here. And now the last color I'm going to use is Distressed Crayon Speckled Egg. It's a lighter blue. So if you don't have these products, uh, you can either, you know, check out my Amazon account and order them, or you can do your own products that you have. In fact, I encourage you to use what you have in your house. I'm going to... Um, you can use watercolor. You could use um, chalk pastel or pan pastel. You could use anything. And pencils if you want. It'll just take you longer. I like to do base coats and I like to do a lot of things that help me go faster. Um, not that I'm in a hurry. I, I enjoy the process. Now this speckled egg is a different color of blue. And I wanted to have that, uh, what did I do with it? There it is. <laughs> I lost it. It has sort of a grayish tint to it. It's, um, I don't want to say that either. It's a muted color. It's a very beautiful color, speckled egg. And let's just blend that together there. It's a, I'm going to put more on it because of the grayscale. Even though it's grayscale, I want to be able to see that color. And I want the grayscale showing through. There we go. That's more the speckled egg color than I like. Well, this is going to be fun. I've never done it except with makeup, eyeshadow, and chalk pastel. So this time it will be different. Okay, let's take a look at our sky. I think it's coming out. Now let's do the ocean. We need to do the, these things in the background first. The reason I have multiple brushes is because now I'm going to want to, after I finish the water, the well, water is sort of a, a turquoise or there's a little purple there and a little blue. So turquoise, I'm going to do that too here. Um, and I'm going to have, I have different brushes sets and I encourage you to get more than one little set of brushes because you're going to need them. It, what happens is that you can wet them and change, you know, uh, get the color out, but you've got to wait till they dry, and otherwise you're going to mess up your um, picture if you want it dry. So uh, using these um, gel crayons dry. So this way you always have a brush handy for a color you've got, and then you can just wash those at the end of the day. So that's just a suggestion that I would make to you. And uh, let's see, um, I think I'm just going to wipe this brush off because the colors are not going to clash with each other. And on the 
Um, well, except for this little, I'm going to use this shaded lilac across here. And I'm again scribbling on my palette. And I think what I'm going to do is take a small brush. This is a medium size. This is the small, and then there's a larger and a set. There's a set of four different colors that come together, and they're inexpensive, and they're just wonderful. Okay, I'm going to do this with that shaded lavender here. Is there's there's oh well, it looks similar. I just look and see how it's coming out. Okay. Oh, I'll put a little more on. So sometimes with the gray scale, um, you may need a little more extra crayon. And the crayon comes out lighter when you pick it up dry versus when you wet it. But I want to keep this background and some of, some of this painting uh, picture dry and some not. Okay, now... I'm going to put that lavender brush aside because I'll use it again. And uh, I'm going to use my blue brush again, my brush again. And this time, um, let's see, the water's a little bit darker. So I'm going to go back to that first color, Broken China. And I am going to pick it up and go in here. Now I'm going to have to switch brushes because I don't want to go too much over well, maybe not. Maybe I can go around the edge with a small brush. Okay, I'm going to put a little more broken china in there. Oh, gel crayons work really great in this kind of a grayscale book. And I'm going to blend it with, the, with that um, lilac there. Okay, that's looking good. Now, I'm going to take the small brush that I used for the blue and pick up some of it and just blend it here. Blend, blend, blend. Okay, let's take a look at that now. Hey, it doesn't look too bad at all. What I'm going to do, now it looks lighter in the camera than it is to me, but what I am going to do is take some of that purple, or lavender I should say, with my other brush, and I just want to make a little bit more, put a little bit more in there, and blend it down. Okay, I like that look a little bit better. Okay, there we go. Let's take the glare off of it here and see how I can't tell. Okay, well, let's get going and we'll see how the rest of it's going to look. Now, okay, we've got the background done. That's the first thing I would start with. And then... Let's see, we want to go to the buildings, and they have a pinkish stucco type thing here, beige, pink, but a little pink in it. This one is beige without the pink. That is a little bit with, uh, it looks yellow from the flowers. So, okay, let's go ahead and do, I found this color, Tattered Rose by Distress Crayon. Let me wipe up my palette. When it gets to be too dirty, just take a baby wipe and wipe it off. That's all you need to do. Baby wipes are your best friend in art. Buy any baby wipes that you can in the store. Doesn't matter the brand. They all work the same. And I'm going to go ahead and put down some of this Tattered Rose. Oh, it's a beige with a little bit of a rose 
um, tint to it. And uh, do I want this dry or wet? I think I'm going to go dry again on these areas and the buildings. And then the flowers we may do wet. So let me get another brush out here and pick that up. Okay. Now I'm going to go over this doorway. I know the doorway is white up here. Uh, sort of a white, but I can always go around that with um, a paint pen or something. So we'll see. Or we can try white on it and see how that comes out. I don't know. But I'll just go over it. It makes it easier. And we can always use a Prismacolor white pencil if we need to also. I'm just going to go in a little bit there. I have to get those um, that building colored up next to the plants that are hanging down. Now, this book is a Villas by the Sea, and it just reminds me of Italy. I don't know if in Greece they have these kind of villas by the sea, but I would picture a Mediterranean country would. And um, oh, I just love them. I would love to go to one of them <laughs> and have a little vacation there. Wouldn't that be beautiful? And they're such quaint little uh, towns they're in, or villages they're in. Okay, it's I want that a little darker. So, you know, you can make as many layers with the gel crayons that you need to do. And like I said, you'll see when we use them wet that they'll be brighter or easier. It'll be different, let's put it that way. But I'm using this color on purpose because I want my building to look similar to the one in the picture there. No guessing on colors. If you are a person that gets stuck on a color palette all the time, I would suggest getting a grayscale book like this and working on it. You'd be surprised. It does the work for you. I know a lot of beginners think, oh my gosh, I can't do that. It looks so difficult, but actually it's not. It's easier than a line drawing. Okay, let's see if that's dark enough. Now it looks lighter in the camera here. But um, I, I might go one more time over it just so I have it a little bit darker to suit me in person. Okay. And, you know, I don't have to make that doorway white if I don't want. I can accent it with a different color. So... This is strictly, the picture here is strictly a guide. Okay, now on this building, now that one doesn't look so pinkish to you, but it does to me. On this building, I thought I'd use a different color. It's called Old Paper, and it is more of a color like, like here, um, a cement color, I guess without the pinkish glow. So let me put that down. Let me see if I can use the same brush if I clean it off real well. Yeah, then I'll be able to use the same brush for the other light color. I'm going to do the large spaces first. And then go back to do all the flowers and any details. Yeah, that's going to look good too. Okay, so this is old paper. And 
and dry is really nice. And like I said, it, you know, if we were doing a different type of line drawing, I could take an electric eraser and erase any of this that I get on the uh, part of the image that I do not like. The darker your color, the more your, your paper might stain. So it does depend a lot on your paper. But they are erasable. You can erase them enough to be able to color over it and fix that area if you happen to make a mistake. Okay, now some of that's going to be here on these plants, but I can't help it. And we'll just see when I put my other color on top with for the flowers with the different bright colors, how they look. We'll find out. Okay. Now, if your gel crayons seem a little dry and it's hard to pick them up, you might have it just a tiny bit damp, but know that you're setting the color if you do that. So I'm trying this um, old paper color just is a little bit drier than the other one. So it's a little bit harder to pick up and a little more pressure I need to spread it. But it's not bad. It's okay. I want to make that. I just thought these um, muted colors from the distressed crayons would work really well on this type of picture. I used to do oil painting, and I have examples of it on my channel on a playlist if you're interested to look at it. But um, I switched over to color books. I don't have to frame them. I don't have to hang them on the wall. My house is full of paintings, every room. My paintings. I have no more wall space. And oil painting is a lot messier, <laughs> and you need a large area. You need a large studio. So the part that's shaded will be shaded. The part that's not shaded on the picture by the artist will stay lighter. And we're using a light color. How's that starting to look in the camera? Okay, I think I'm going to go one more coat, of, coat over this though. Okay, hold on here. <clears throat> Let me try it out here. I think I'm going to do that piece of wood. I have another color for that windowsill. There I go. Okay, that's it. Now, let's see. Um, I can't do every single bit of this on camera, uh, or my video will be way, way, way too long. So, the bottom part here, and there's a colored area here. I'm going to go ahead and do this in gray. And then we'll stop the video, and I will um, do a little blue with my gray and put in a few of these colors on the walkway here. And that's what I'll do, and then I'll come back, and we can do this together. Now, all of a sudden, with the paper at a different angle, I see a different color in the sky here to reflect this. So, guess what I'm going to do? I am going to take my trusty brush here and pick up some more of the tattered rose and put a little bit in the sky to reflect that houses and the walkway. There you go. That looks like the picture on the other side. Okay, so we mixed some colors there. 
Okay, I'm going to be using um, pumice stone. It's a color by Distress Crayon, and I'm mixing it with white picket fence because it'll be too dark of a color for me, and I don't have a mid-color gray. I've got a darker one yet, but that'll be too dark. So let me try this. Let's see, do I want that? That one I want sort of bluish. Okay, now I can erase that. with my handy eraser. Because it's a bluish color. White, bluish, I don't know. We'll see. I don't want to color it right now. And um, let me pick this up and continue here. Oh, I'm sorry I'm off camera. It's not it's not white enough for me. So I'm gonna put down some white here with that. I'm gonna put more white and mix it on my palette. And it's just gonna be that color, so that's fine. Okay, now these are the base coats that we're doing. And then when we come back, we'll be doing detailing, which are the plants, the flowers, maybe the colors here. So I'm going to let you know that this is how I'm working with it. And that you, if you're going to follow along, if you have this book, or you buy the book and you look at the video later, you can follow along. And... Um, just stay tuned. Whoops, let me turn it this way. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got my computer in the way. That's my problem here. So what I'm going to do is I'll go off camera so I don't bore you and work on this area making it gray. And then we can come back and put colors in it when we put the colors everywhere else. Okay, so stay tuned. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and here we go so far. I um, put some gray in here and some blue, and I tried to make it similar to this. I think I need a little bit more blue in here and some on the driveway here or this area. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to proceed. I, I might leave it and look at it after I'm finished. I did start using the uh, crayon here, Distress Crayon, on the flowers. And now what I want to say is I tried them wet, and this paper didn't really want to hold up. I mean, I could do them wet. I, I um, use water on Amazon paper, but I prefer not to. I think that they're brighter when I use them straight and apply them dry. So that's what I'm going to do. And... Um, the other thing I want to say, those of you that are not familiar with oil painting, is that these flowers are not, and buildings, everything here is not drawn precisely like a line drawing. The artist will make a dab of color, and that is a flower. Now, he's not drawing it. And if you look at it up close, it does not look like a flower. But when you stand back in an oil painting and look at it, you your brain will register that this is these are flowers in this pot under the window. I hope that makes sense to you. So we're not going to be precise here because we have no precise lines. What we're going to use is the dark and the light and the medium color. That's all I'm going to use. And I'm going to just randomly, uh, I'm going to go by my picture and I'm going to try to uh, put it in the best I can, and it's not precise. So let's get going. One thing I would like to do 
is uh, have a little of this uh, gelato snow cone color blue. And um, let me get a brush again. Okay. And I'm going to put a little of that in here. Just Now there's this lighter. I made some light spots and I want to tell you how I did that. I went and put the gray and blue in and then I took my eraser and just erased it. Here too for the highlights. Here for the highlights. And around this here I said we could use some um, paint pen, but I don't need to. Just erasing this after I went over it with the background color works fine. So that's what we're going to do there. And let's add a little extra blue. I just, and you can go over things with this gelatos, which I really like. Now, that makes me happier. But if you notice, there's a little more light in the originals. So I'm going to make sure I add my light back in. I'm going to just erase a little bit here under the wall so that it has that look. That's it. And um, let me come and zoom in for you. I think you could see that, but um, <clears throat> yeah, so I have my light in with that. This I never colored. I left it white that the way that it was, and I put some blue in the gate. I need a little more blue here in the gate, and um, so we're doing this whole picture with dry uh, gel crayon. Okay, let's get going now over here. I need some pink, a bright pink and dark pink. That's how the picture looks. So I'm going to start with the lightest pink I have first. And it's called a Kitsch, Kitsch Flamingo. And I'm going to put down a little of the darker pink, which is picked raspberry. I'm going to see how it looks on the grayscale because I noticed that my colors here are super bright, but because it's going on grayscale, it sort of tones it down. I'm using the lightest color first, and I'm going to refer back to the original drawing up here. Uh, I can't get them both on camera at the same time. So um, I'm going to bring a little in here, pink down in here and then the first time it's not really I'm going to try a little darker one there you go that made it a little brighter so I'm going to use that now and there's a little pink going up here <clears throat> I'm going to mix them together I think okay I like that better because on the grayscale it looks better that way. Okay, let's see. If you look at this, we have some pink going here. So I'm going to go back and put the pink on here. I need room for the yellow that's beneath it. Now I have to do, I notice, two coats for it to really be bright. I want it bright because the rest is toned down. Okay, now if you notice here, there's yellow, and the yellow goes over in here, and there's also some green. So I don't want to cover all of it up. I want to leave a little room for green, and it goes all the way down here. Okay, let me get a brush for the, uh, for the yellow. And I'm going to scribble on my palette again. This one is called... Mustard seed. Great, great, great color. Let's see what it's going to look like here on. Yeah, I'm going to have to make it. I go over it more than once. And how's that going to look? Is that going to look yellow? Well, let's put a little more on and we'll find out. I think I have a lighter yellow. If so, I'll get it out. But let's try this one because this one was the most bold uh, color. I'm going to go down here. 
And don't forget, this building's a little different color, too. Yeah, it's showing up. It will show up. Great. Okay, um, well, yeah, I'm going to do that. And now let me get the green color out. It's uh, by Gelato, and it's called Pistachio. It's, um, I don't know, uh, olive colored, I would say. Let me get another. <clears throat> oh, another brush. That doesn't really show up with the yellow so much, so I think I'm going back to the yellow. And um, let me try one of these angled brushes. Um, I'm going to go back to the yellow and make it a little brighter here. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the pistachio goes, let me try this little, this angled brush. These black ones are angled. There's a set of them. And they um, are a little smaller, actually, I think. Oh, yeah, that worked really great. And I'm going to put a little green in here. Okay. Now, let's go back to our yellows. I'm going to show you how to do this bouquet here. And we'll work a little bit on these pots here. And then the rest of it will all be just repeating by looking at our picture. So I won't bore you on camera with all of that. Okay, let's go back and look up here. I need yellow again. And... I'm going to just hold my picture up so I can see it and try to put this in the areas that I think are going to look the best. And you can see where they have light and dark, but you're not going to be able to keep those separated. Um, so just put in what you can on most of it. Even if some of it looks like a leaf, it doesn't matter. And then go ahead. Let me put some more out here. I just use my gel crayons in small amounts because they dry out. Keep the cap on them. They'll dry out. And then I'm going to go with the green here on these darker areas. Then you can go on top of that yellow where you want that leaf to show, if that makes sense. <clears throat> okay. So here I need... Um, this part pink, this part green, and this part yellow. So while I have the green out, I'm going to put the green in here. <clears throat> now on some of the grayscale, it's so dark, you won't be able to see your color, but don't skip it. You must color it because it is there, and it will show in the light. And you can even bring it out a little bit and blend it so it is visible. So don't skip it. Cover all these areas. I will do the the uh, house too, the way the uh, windows and door. Okay, I want more yellow down in here. There we go. There we go. And let's see where my pink is again. I think it's hard to see the distinction between the two pinks. So I am going to just use the darker one because it comes out brighter. And I will erase that there on the edge where I went over. Love it. Love the fact they're erasable. And is there any more pink on this side? No. This is green and yellow, so let's go with that while we have it out. We have our brushes handy. 
You don't have to change colors. Um, no pink, we need yellow. Green and yellow. Okay, yellow. Um, and it's very simple. You just rub it on with your brush. Okay. Now, in the original picture, it looks like they put some more yellow in the stucco or something here. I might take a little of the other color from this building and stick in there, but we'll see. I might not do it at all. It might not need it. Okay, let me take a look at where all the yellow is. Okay, the rest is green, believe it or not. And we're going to go over those a little bit so the green does show. So this is uh, what they call, um, well, what I can't think of the word now that I wanted to say it. Your, your items aren't drawn succinctly, uh, perfectly. For example, a flower is not drawn as a flower. It's just a dab on the artist's canvas. And these grayscale are a replication of the original oil painting. So artists don't draw. They just paint, <laughs> if that makes sense. Now you can see that that green is on there, even though that's very, very dark grayscale. In person, now I don't know if it shows in camera, but in person you can see that. Yeah, it does show on the camera. And I came out just a little bit on the edge with it, so it will show a little more. And I'll put some in there. <clears throat> and I'm not going to add yellow to this building because I want my flowers to show up. Okay, let's see. I want a little more pink in here, make it a little bit darker. I use the lighter color, and I think this darker pink is better. There we go. So, now, let's work a little bit. <clears throat> let's do the doorway. Okay, I'm going to keep my brushes here because they're designated to a certain color. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to use um, one of the snow cone colors that I used in the sky. That doorway is dark, but there's some light coming through here so you see the blue. So that's exactly what I want to do here. Let me scribble this on my palette. I'm taking a lighter blue, and I'm going to go in this doorway, <coughs> and I want my blue to show. This is about the easiest coloring you can do, <laughs> I'll tell you. It really is. It's not difficult at all, and it would be great for beginners, <clears throat> or anyone, actually. I'm going to put blue in the windows. And over here, they had this part of the window, like a window shutter blue. <clears throat> so I'm going to put it, put it there. I'm going to get more of my color out. I'm going to put it all through there, the middle and that. And then the window upstairs, they had blue on it too. Okay, a little more. These little brushes are really great for doing this, too. Now, uh, let's see. Let me clean this brush off. It had some green on it. <clears throat> Just going to rub it here. And I'm going to use some of this vintage photo color, which is wonderful. And I love it. And I'm going to do the wood on the house. This here. Now, when you use a bigger brush, you have to get more gel in it. 
more gel. So <clears throat> I have to load it up again with some gel. Okay. I'm going to put a little brown there just because I want it. <laughs> it's not in the picture, I don't think. Uh, not really, but I'm putting it on there because I like it. This I'm going to leave white because the um, sun is shining there. And um, let's do the pots. Okay, so on the pots, I'm going to be using Vintage Photo. I, I don't have this kind of a color here. And I'm using what they call barn door. So, and I notice there's a darker color there. I will be using aged mahogany. So, here will be barn door and mixed with the, with the vintage photo and brown. And here will be the aged mahogany. So I'm going to do the light colors first. Let me wipe my palette off. Make room for my new colors. <clears throat> and like I said, a baby wipe is your best friend here. It's all you need. Let me wipe it off and make it dry. Okay, and I'm going to scribble on my palette again. The um, barn door, which is a darkish red. And this one is vintage photo, which is a really neat brown color. These colors all match his Distress Ink sets. So I'm going to mix the red barn door and the brown together. Please, you can mix these colors. Don't feel you can't. Okay. And then I'm going to go down here and try that. Now it doesn't look that red. It looks red. Not quite as bright as that. I'll show you what I'll do to brighten it up. <clears throat> you can always mix in a little white if you want to also. But I'm not going to do that. Okay. And then we need the aged mahogany. Now I don't have a brush for it. Hold on. Um. <clears throat> I'm going to put the aged mahogany here on my palette. Pick it up with my brush. And yeah, it's just going to look dark. But you do in person see that there is a color on it. So please color in these dark areas with the appropriate color. If you're not, your your picture's not going to look that good at the in, in real life. Now that's darker, a lot darker than that. But I don't have the exact colors, so I'm going to try adding a little white here. I don't know what that's going to look like. Let's give it a shot. Oops, I got the wrong brush. I'm going to use the one with the barn door on it. There, that lightened it some. I'm just going straight on it. That piece is a piece of, whoops. So you could mix a little white in there with your original colors if you choose to. Or you could do it this way. So our pots will look a little different. But you know what? That's okay. <laughs> And what I'm going to do is give them a highlight here, like the sun shining on it. Now, I like to erase gel crayon when it's dry, but you can erase it when it's still a little sticky or tacky or wet like this. Okay. And I'm going to make that a little bit there so you can see there's a second pot. Okay, so that's how my pots are going to look. They're looking fine, but they're not exactly... Oh, I have some 
eraser crumb there. Okay, they're not, if I had a gel stick that was this color, a lighter, I would use it, but I don't. So my pots are going to be that color. And maybe if I stick in a little of this ripe persimmon, let's try that too, if it'll make it brighter. And I'll put it over the white areas. Yeah, that makes it brighter. That might have been my best color, huh? Okay, let's go with my brush here. I'm going to wipe it off a little, some of the gel. Okay, I like that better. We fixed it. Okay. Yeah, it's not quite as bright as the other, but it looks good. Now, remember, I said in the first part of this video, we're never going to get exactly this up here in the sample because this is a printed picture from a book. And we have a totally different mediums and paper and grayscale is going to react differently. Okay, in fact, let's get that light coming back in here. Mm -hmm. I like, and it's uneven. Leave it that way. Oh, we want it that way. So, get my eraser crumbs off. Hey, that's looking good. Okay, there's a shadow under there that's blue. And so we want to make sure we put some more blue in. Let me get my brush for the blue. I want some of the blue here. I took the light snow cone blue from the sky, the mid color, the middle. On the sky, you're going to choose a dark, medium, and light. And I'm using the mid color here. I notice when things are a little bit too light, it doesn't show up as well. And there's a shadow, a cast shadow around these pots. Yeah. Okay. I will add a little bit more blue here. Just because I like that, I feel like it needs a little more shading. So don't be afraid to add your own ideas to it also. Remember, the picture is just a guide. And a little bit along here. I'm going to leave that white stripe there. Oh, I do need some blue there under the building is casting a shadow. And this one I want to show is blue. Okay, I'd like to put a little more on. There we go. And that's the same color. Now if I want to, I can take my eraser and lighten up those streaks that were in there originally. and let them stay lighter. Up here, this one is staying lighter. This one could be a little lighter. Yeah, a little lighter here. Okay. I think that's all we're going to do on camera right now because the rest is just going to be repetitive. Look at your picture. Sort of just like these yellow flowers come in through here and you can see there's a light color light 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 here and then you can see the medium I put medium and dark I would go with the leaves 
And that's about it. Same with this building here. Let me do just this one uh, streak here so you, you'll see again how I've done it. And uh, it's real easy. Now, if I can remember which brush <laughs> I had for yellow. I blue. Okay. Um, where did my yellow go? There it is. Okay. I'm going to put some more yellow on my palette. And go with the lightest color first. Cover the light areas. Let's see. And they go all the way up here. You can see where the texture on the of flowers are on the stucco of the house. That's all textured here in the picture. Okay, a little more. And over in here, some more. I'm going to go even over what would be conceived as leaves. It's fine. Now they have a darker color coming down there, and I'm not sure what that is. It might be um, this lavender color, which you could also put in here. Up, and that's what I'll do. I'll add it to the blue, and then I'll add it to that part of the building so that it um, makes sense to me. So this is shadows. And that's going to be green. So I'm just leaving a little shadow there. I'm going to put in some of the purple here. Just a little shadow. It's a great shadow color, a light lavender. Okay. Now, where's our green? And uh, That was yellow. That's green. I am still going to use this uh, pistachio from Gelato. And I'm going to put the green in here so there's uh, a hint. Uh, uh, your eye sees it and it perceives it as leaves and flowers. When you look at an oil painting, you never look at close. You get six feet away and look at an oil painting. That's how they're uh, viewed. Never up close because you can't see really what the artist was trying to render. And I'm going to do these leaves here coming down. And I'm making sure that my green shows a little bit on the house. That's it. Um, and it goes on and continues. And I didn't get that window there. There's a window there. That was yellow. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let me get a little more blue in there. I want to see it. I love doing this kind of impressionistic art. And that's what it would be called. It gives you an impression. It's not a line drawing. Okay, let's back out and see what we've got so far. Okay, it's looking similar to this. And what I am going to do is um, add some more green here. I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to finish this uh, flowers there on the house. And then I will come back with this whole thing finished. We have to finish the flowers in here. And um, personally, I'm not going to use pencil to do any detailing. I don't think it needs it whatsoever. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back and show you what it looks like when it's all finished. Well, I'm back, and I think that I finished this. So let's take a look at it um, from a distance and look at the original picture, our guide, and then look at this. Okay, so here is the original picture. 
which we just want to use as a guide and get as close to as possible. And here's my picture. I did add a little extra shading here um, on the roof and on the building. And I put some shading on this building behind the flowers. A uh, little extra down here. Don't be afraid to make these pictures your own. Um, this is lighter and airier, but this is also light and airy, but in a different way. So I just wanted to stop by and show you the finished product. This is an easy project. You have gel crayons and some of these little brushes. You're fine. I'll list all my supplies below. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I'll be glad to answer them as the best I can. And until we meet again, happy coloring.